calculate the rate of heat transfer per unit area through a copper plate of 45 mm thickness okay so the thickness is given you just have to look at it means uh, you know the Fourier's law of conduction I will be uh, showing it to you uh, or actually you can see it yourself so Fourier's law of conduction has thickness at the denominator so you need to check it out like that so calculate the rate of heat transfer per unit area through a copper plate 45 mm thick whose cone face whose one face is maintained at 350 degrees Celsius and the other face at 50 degrees Celsius. First shock, take thermal conductivity, that is K, of copper as 370 watts per meter degree Celsius. Okay, so what's there? You can see the temperature difference, the temperature difference is actually given. So it is 50 degrees Celsius and it is 350 degrees Celsius and you know you you need to have a delta t so it is 350 minus 50 okay now the thickness of copper plate l is 45 mm okay so it is this much when converted in meters okay and thermal conductivity is also given so thermal conductivity is 370 watts per meter degree celsius so this is the k and we have seen what is k and how is it relevant for conducting heat through any material okay so by the Fourier's law of conduction by the Fourier's law of conduction you know that Q is equals to minus K A dt by dx so this dt by dx will be like first of all you just keep this minus sign outside so it will be like T2 minus T1 by L L is the thickness okay here it is L is the thickness K is the conductivity A is the cross-sectional area so it's T2 minus T1 but you know that T2 is actually 50 degrees Celsius and T1 is 350 degrees Celsius so when you multiply minus sign inside the bracket here okay so actually then it becomes 350 minus 50 okay so it is like this once again so it is minus K dt by dx okay so what you need to find out is heat transfer per unit area so since the phase dimensions are not given in this numerical so you have to go for this heat flux okay so it is q by a so it is like that just put on the values so the thermal conductivity is 370 okay uh, you can leave the minus sign outside or you can multiply it inside as i have already told you okay so it can be like 350 minus 50 or you can take it like minus sign outside and 50 minus 350 okay so it is 0 0.045 and finally when you calculate you will get like 2.466 into 10 to the power 6 watts per meter square and it is also megawatts because 10 to the power 6 watts is actually uh, commonly called as megawatts so this is a very simple numerical depicting the Fourier's law of conduction so you have to remember that you if you are given a set of temperatures I'm talking about the set of temperatures because here it is two but there can be numerous uh, depending on the composite uh, wall uh, you know uh, elements okay the composite elements of any wall okay so it's Fourier's law so Fourier's law is Q is equal to minus K A dt by dx so you need to find out all the elements and if all the elements are given just directly apply the Fourier's law of conduction and if there is a twist means if something has to be taken out from the value from, from the uh, formulae then you need to find out how can it be done so let's target a new numerical now okay now let's see uh, a plain wall is 150 mm thick and its wall area is 4.5 meter square if its conductivity is 9.35 watts per meter degree celsius and its surface temperatures are steady at 150 and 45 degrees Celsius determine the first thing heat flow across the plane wall the second thing temperature gradient in the flow direction okay so what you need to find out you need to find out what else is what else is given and what else you need to find out okay so first of all what you need to find out is the first part is heat flow across the plane wall so heat flow is basically Q okay so Q across the plane wall will definitely you need to apply Fourier's law of conduction okay now the second thing is temperature gradient in the flow direction now what do you mean by temperature gradient temperature gradient you all know this is the formula okay 
it is dt by dx okay if this is the first thing you need to find out then this is the second thing you need to find out that is dt by dx so what is given here the l is 150 mm l means the thickness okay here it is 150 mm thickness okay so it's mm so just convert it into meters because you have to you know uh, be consistent with the units so you cannot uh, you know uh, keep any unit in other uh, means uh, you cannot keep uh, the value in any other unit okay so it has to be common so it's si for us okay so and in india basically we we go for si units only we do not follow the ip units it's uh, it's not that much recommendable okay so the area of the wall area of the wall is also given here so a is four and a half meter square no need to change the units it's already in meter square okay now the temperature difference dt the temperature difference where is the temperature difference here it's 150 degrees celsius and it's 45 degrees celsius so it is like 45 minus 150 so it is minus 105 degrees celsius okay so you can definitely do as i've told you in the previous numerical you can definitely do like this okay you can definitely do like that okay now thermal conductivity of the wall material where it is given it is given here this is the thermal conductivity given so given okay so k is also given in the numerical now what you need to do is you need to calculate the q and you also need to calculate dt by dx so q is equals to minus k a dt by dx and this is the and uh, you know that this is the most important formula when you know the conduction is concerned so you should remember every time that this is now uh, when you solve it i will be definitely solving the you know fourier's law in uh, in uh, cylinder fourier's law in sphere then this dx will actually change it will be you know radii okay so here is the formula dt can be broken up like t2 minus t1 and here dx is basically the thickness so you solve it you get it okay so it is like 29 kilowatts okay very simple mathematics just put all the values find out the values take it and given put all the values calculate q now the next thing is the temperature gradient so temperature gradient how will you do the temperature gradient so temperature gradient could be found out by just you know keeping this as the subject here q is equals to minus k a dt by dx take this as the subject keep everything there in the left hand side so it will be like this so here they have done the same thing so here it's minus 700 degree celsius per meter now do not get confused with the minus sign here because the minus sign you know it indicates that the means the temperature is decreasing when you are increasing the thickness okay so this doesn't mean that it is freezing minus 700 degrees celsius no it is just to infer it is just to tell you that yes the temperature is reducing because the material is so thick so the temperature is reducing when you are going in increasing direction of the thickness of the wall or any material i think this is pretty much simple numerical to understand because it's the simple application of the formula okay now let's read this numerical this numerical says the following data relate to an oven okay thickness of side wall of the oven is 82 and a half mm okay you just have to mark everything so that you know uh, you you can actually you know recollect when you are solving the numerical the what is given and what is not so thermal conductivity of wall insulation thermal conductivity so it is 0 0.044 watts per meter degree celsius now the temperature on inside of the wall this is 175 degrees celsius so one temperature has been noted down energy dissipated by the electrical coil so here the q is given in the previous numerical we were calculating q with the formulae but here we are given with the q okay so q is given and when q is given so definitely you need to calculate something else so what do you need to calculate determine the area of the wall surface okay so here a has to be calculated and you know very much by this time that q is directly proportional to a and thermal and the uh, and the formula of uh, fourier's law of conduction does contain a so if you have q if you can calculate dt by dx if you have k so definitely by very 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 simple mathematics you can calculate the area a 
Okay, so here it is x, x means the thickness, okay, was in mm, converted into meters, okay, here is the k, remember if k had been in mm, you would have converted into meters once again, so you know, uh, it has to be uniform in every respect, okay, so it's 175 degrees Celsius, T1, T2 is 75 degrees Celsius and Q is 40 and a half, 40 and a half watts, okay, and you know very well, by this time that this is Fourier's law of conduction. Everything is given to you except the A. So here the Q is given that is 40 and a half watts. Okay. So this is K. This is K. Okay. Area is unknown. Okay. So these are the temperatures. So here is the DT. This is the temperature difference. And this is the thickness of the wall. Here it is. Okay. So just by simple mathematics, this is your final answer. Quite simple, isn't it? So, these are certain sets of numerical that I am talking about. That these kind of numerical, uh, if you get in your core, uh, if you get in your examination, you can definitely just bang onto it and you can solve it just in a simple go. You do not have to worry about, oh my god, what's there? Means what kind of formula we need to apply. Just find out what kind of variables are actually given in the numerical and the amount uh, and the type of variables that are given in the numerical will actually decide what kind of formula you need to use. We have done, uh, till now we have done three numericals and three numericals I have shown you, it actually goes upon the Fourier's law of conduction. Okay, now let's talk about the next numerical. Okay, so the next numerical says a hot plate 1 meters by 1.5 meters. Now here, this is the area given, okay, it's 1 meter here, okay, so this is the area given, so A is given here, okay, definitely I will be uh, going through the given details once again, is maintained at 300 degrees Celsius, one temperature has been recorded, air at 20 degrees Celsius, so the second temperature has been recorded, blows over the plate, if the convective heat transfer coefficient now, students, now this is, uh, this is the numerical for convection, okay, this is not about conduction, why? Because here it is written convective heat transfer coefficient, had there been, had there been, uh, had there been written like thermal conductivity, talking about K, then you would have applied Fourier's law of conduction, but here it is showing convective heat transfer coefficient, he is talking about H and you know the formula, okay, so first of all let's talk about this is H, so calculate the rate of heat transfer, so if we talk about calculate the rate of heat transfer and we have seen they have not, they are not talking about K, they are talking about, they are talking about H means the convective heat transfer coefficient, so the formula here changes from Fourier's law of conduction to Newton's law of cooling or Newton's law of convection, okay, so let's talk about the given once again, its area, I have told you, it's here, okay, the plate surface temperature, okay, here, okay, now the temperature of fluid, air means it is basically the ambient temperature, you can, you know, note it down with your own subscripts and superscripts, okay, so it is 20 degrees Celsius, here, okay, it's convective heat transfer coefficient already given, 20 watts per, now the formula is this, I have already explained you that it is Q is directly proportional to A and Q is directly proportional to delta T and this delta T is surface minus the fluid, the bulk fluid temperature that is T infinity, okay. So when you remove the constant of proportionality, so it will be H A delta T and the same formula has been applied here, okay. So just look at it, H, the value is given, A and this, look at it, this is H 20, Okay, area 1.5 meter square, T surface is 300 degrees Celsius and T fluid is 20 degrees Celsius. So here is your answer. Very, very simple numerical depicting another very, very, very important law which has been accepted globally, which has been accepted globally. Okay, so uh, this is a very important work of Sir Isaac Newton.